hearts, Lord God, so that truth, Lord God, would begin, Lord God, to impact, Lord God, and, and cause root, so that way we could produce fruits, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, right now, and give you praise, honor, and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Give him praise. If you would turn with me this morning to the book of Galatians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 5, and then we're going to go into Luke, amen, just to uh, set a little bit of foundation here. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive the adoption as sons. We'll just stay right there. Go back. Put this in the King James Version. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of the sons. To redeem. How I many of you just got to show up sometimes? If God would have never showed up, we would never be redeemed. He didn't have to show up. You know what, there's a big universe out there, you know what, he could have been anywhere else besides here on planet Earth doing a number of other things, looking at the stars, moons, and quasars. But no, what did he do? He showed up. Now go with me to Luke chapter 9, verse 51. Just showing up. He says, and it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go where? To Jerusalem. Now he knew what was about to happen, but steadfastly, guess what? He set his face to where he was. He showed up. Most of you guys, you know what, had a different agenda this morning. Maybe some things weren't going so right, but guess what? You showed up. You just showed up. Maybe you didn't feel like showing up this morning. You know what? Maybe you woke up this morning and you didn't feel like serving God this morning. Maybe you woke up this morning and you didn't feel so Christian this morning. You know what? But you showed up and that's what makes the difference. You know, a lot of times, you know what? We're holding on and we're waiting. And that's the important thing. You know what? You show up. You show up to your court cases. You know what? You show up to your parole. Law. You show up to these places. You, you show up, you know what, to, to the ICE offices. You show up to the attorneys. You show up. You show up. Even though you don't get the answer you want, you continue to show up. You show up. Why? Because we serve a faithful God. I mean, you know, you just got to be there. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Be there. You know, maybe sometimes, you know what, a lot of times we always think we have something to say. You don't have to always say something. You know, when somebody dies, you know what, a lot of times we come up with a thing, you know what, I don't want to bother them, you know what, or I just want to let them have their space. Newsflash, wrong, that was used to be, that used to be me. No, you know what, you don't have to say nothing, just show up. Just be there. Your presence just there with you say nothing means more than anything else. Even in the church house, when it comes to ministry, so many people feel like, you know what, they have no gifts, no talents, no abilities, or things are going on in their life, and instead of just showing up, they pull, 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 proceed to pull themselves out. When God wants you to show up. You know what, maybe you've been coming to church for, you know, quite some years now, or quite some time, and serving God for who knows how long, you know what, and you've been showing up. But you're like, man, you know what, man, I know God wants me to do this. I know God wants me to do that. I know God wants me to do that, but pastor hasn't asked me yet. That's your problem. Just show up. Be there. When's the last time, you know what, man, pastor, you know what, the Lord's putting this on my heart, you know what, man, and praise God. And what, is, what does pastor always say? Go for it. Do it. I got your back. But you know what? You need to be there. You need us to show up. 
See, we're seeing these fruits right now of individuals in the church that have a heart for God that just show up. And a lot of it isn't about what I want to do. You know what? What I want to do is that, you know, what needs to be done. What needs to be done? You know what? I'm here. I'm just showing up. I don't know how to do it, but I'm here. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? I love my Uncle Charles. Even though me and my Uncle Charles butt heads a lot. Me and my family, we all butt heads. Why? Because we're all alike. We always want to be the voice, not the show on TV. <laughs> Thank God. Amen. Thank you, sister. <laughs> Y'all heard me sing, huh? Thank God. You don't need to be on the voice, man. You ain't got no voice. Thank you, Jesus. But my Uncle Charles, you know what he has to say? That he says, you know what? He goes, I don't want to miss it. That's why I show up. But there's only going to be two people there. I don't care. I'm going to show up. Why? Because God has something for me there. He has something. I don't know what it is, but something, something, and I'm going to show up. I'm just going to be there. Man, how many of us, you know what, we chose drugs or alcohol or gangs or different types of things over, you know, what's showing up for God. And God couldn't show out for us. How many of that God wants to show out for you if you show up? He does. He really does. But a lot of times, you know, we got to get our priorities straight. We've got to change things a little bit. How many of us just showed up and missed it? Amen. <laughs> it's too late. And we waited and we waited and we showed up, you know what I mean? And everybody was like, well, where did everybody go? My altar call's done already. Remember, I thought pastor preached for like an hour and a half. That's why I showed up late. <laughs> huh? I'm only, I'm only used to them 30-minute sermons. You know what? I got to get in the door right on time. Man, what I, pastor cut it, cut it soon today. What happened? I missed it. Everybody's walking out all happy and blessed. And you missed it. You missed it. What did I miss? I, just, I can't tell you. <laughs> you had to be there to, to see it. You know what I mean? You had to be there. You know, that's the thing. A lot of us, you know, when it comes to revivals, when it comes to these get-togethers, these things that we do, these conferences and stuff that the church has put together, you know, and all these things, a lot of times, you know, we choose not to go. Why? Because we've been offended. We choose not to go because, you know, what? we got things going on in our life. You know what? I, I get it. We're, we're all busy. But how many of us have made that an excuse in our lives as Christians to put God on the back burner and to put what we're doing first? And we've made excuses in our walk with God instead of being there. Instead of just being there. You know what? I've been going to that church for so long. You know what? Pastor them don't even recognize me. You know what? All they care about is my tithe and offering. They don't even invite me out to eat. Nothing. Do this. Nothing. No, 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 no. What does that matter? Why is your eyes on all these other things and what you're doing if you're doing it for the service of God when you just need to be there? Don't you know that your freedom is in God? Right. Your freedom isn't in man. It isn't in American laws. It isn't in anything. Your freedom is in God. Jesus de Cristo. Yeah. And he who is free is free indeed. Yeah. He's free. But you got to make yourself available and you got to keep being there. Have you ever been guilty of not showing up? You knew you should have been there, but you just didn't go. Come on now. Your friend asked, uh, asked you to help him to move, you know what I mean, like a month prior. And then that day came up and all of a sudden you forgot. <laughs> you forgot to show up, right? And then you call him the next day. You're like, how you doing, bro? He's like, man, I'm tired. Why? He goes, man, we were moving all day yesterday. What happened to you? Oh, I forgot. You know, that's the average Christian's excuse on Sunday. Where were you at at church? I forgot. How could you forget that Sunday is the day of the Lord? They've been showing this stuff on television for years. We, we got to know this by now. <laughs> Sunday's God's day. Not carne sala day. Not brisket day. Not any other day. It's God's day. Amen? But a lot of times we don't show up. Man, I, I used to allow, it used to bother me so much, church. And I'm not trying to go down a rabbit hole. But it used to bother me so much, you know what I mean, because I was spiritually immature. Why people weren't, wouldn't come to church on Sundays, you know, and they say, oh, my family came into town. And I would get mad because they wouldn't show up, and then they would come, and I'd be like, you know what, chastising them from behind the pulpit. 
But no, you know what? We, we do that. We all make excuses. We all have something of why we're not there, of why we didn't show up, why we didn't come, why we didn't do this, and why we didn't do that. But all those are excuses in the end of the day. So why don't people show up when they're going to say they're going to show up? Have you ever thought about that? It could be emergencies. <coughs> Maybe it's selfishness. Maybe it's laziness. But what is it? Eee, I'll be there, but we never show up. And sometimes we just don't place importance on the person that's inviting us or the opportunity that has been placed before us. The importance or the person do you understand who's been placed before us? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Son of God. The only one that could take the sins away from the most important person in the whole universe. In all of creation. In everything is Jesus. And he's given us an invitation just to show up. In your bedroom, in your car, at your workplace, in the cemetery, you know what? In your grief, in your depression, in your doubt, in your fear. I don't know wherever you're at. All you got to do is show up. Yeah. And quit making excuses of why I'm hooked on drugs. Why I'm hooked. Let's not even say why I'm hooked on sin. I mean, you know that sin's not a respecter of person. You know what? Sin doesn't care what race, what nationality you are. It don't care how old or how young you are. Sin is sin at the end of the day. And sin is death, separation from God. And we got to make a choice. What do you call someone who don't show up? In the army, they call them AWOL. At work, they call them what? Late. Independable. Unreliable. Untrustable. Those are just some things I could say. But AWOL, what's that? You, you don't show up. You're missing in action. Missing in action is where I wanted to get to. I mean, we all are part of the army of the Lord. Whether you, you know what, care to view it as that or not, and when you don't show up and when you're not there, guess what? We're missing in action. We're all vulnerable. You know what, just like, I, you know what, you need me to have your back, I need you to have my back. Just like we need brothers and sisters to have our sides, you know what, and you know, all around. We need eyes all around us, you know what, and when we don't show up, what happens is we leave a spot vulnerable to each and every single one of us because we're part of a body of Christ. Now do you understand why it's so important not forsaking the gathering of the fellowship of the brethren? Amen. You know what, I'm just here to tell you this morning that there are people who God has assigned to you and only to you. You have an assignment. There's only people that you're going to reach and if you don't show up, they're not going to make it. There's people in your family that only you're going to reach. There's only friends that you're going to reach. There's co-workers that you're only going to reach. Strangers that you're only going to reach. So next time you feel like not getting up and going to King Supers, get up because God has an assignment for you. There's somebody you got to reach. See, we got to stop leaving the home, you know what, with our own agenda. we got to realize that we're leaving the home on an assignment. You know what, every time we go out on our own assignments, you know what, and we come back empty and void, and our bank accounts have less money in them. Instead of storing up treasures in heaven. Man, all I know is me and my wife, we said, we hate Walmart. We hate Walmart. My mom loves Walmart. But you know what? I got to change that for the glory of God and stop saying, you know what? That I hate Walmart. Hijole. There's an assignment in there, Lord God. Man, there's all kinds of people in there, man. There's every color in the coloring box in there. 
Híjole, that's an assignment. But we're going to make ourselves available. You know, I ain't going there for laundry detergent. You know what? I may go stand in the laundry detergent because it's something that I need at home. But I'm going to wait in that aisle because I got an assignment. There's going to be somebody that come through there. You know what? I'm going to have to educate them on some laundry detergent <laughs> and lead them to the Lord. That's tricky. <laughs> but you got to be there. There are also places that God has assigned to us. This is why I don't like the church hopping philosophy. Yes, things happen in our life. People are people and we get hurt. You know what? But man, if, if God's called you mm, someplace and you know he's called you there, stay there. Why? Because God assigned you there. He didn't assign you at that mega church. He didn't assign you at that comfortable church. He didn't assign you at that church that tells you exactly what you want to hear. Why do you think people, you know what, why do you think we have so many churches out here? We got churches to cater to every single person out there. We got the church for the angry people. We got the church for the sad people. We got the church, you know what, for the in-between people. We got churches to cater everybody's needs. But you know what? We need more praying churches. We need more spirit-filled churches. We need more Holy Ghost churches. We need churches where people will just show up. Just show up. You know what? I ain't nobody. But I showed up one day. You know, in the world, I was a drug addict. I couldn't be a drug dealer, man. I hung around with the cartel. But, man, I spent my money as fast as it came in. As fast as it came in, I spent it. Man, I thought, I thought life was all about parties and everything. I was a drug addict. I was hooked. That's all I spent my time on. But you know what? One day, I just showed up. I knew I had to be there. I didn't want to, but me and my wife just showed up. The cops were looking for me. I was looking at 10, 15 years again. Just met my wife. She was my girlfriend then. She waited for me. Thank you. And before the cops came, this is how good God is, man. You know, he even used my mom in this whole thing. One day I'm cussing out the neighbors, ready to throw on a Royal Rumble with the whole block. Shut down the whole block, knowing I got felony warrants out for me. There's cops parked all over. Every time I walk out, I got to duck out in a different vehicle, go out the back, jump the neighbor's fence in their garage, go through there. It was crazy. <laughs> it's like that stuff you see on TV, but for real life. <laughs> and man, I showed up to church rededicated my life to the Lord. She gave her life to the Lord coming from a Catholic background. And boom, ever since then, it ain't been perfect, but we've been showing up and showing up and showing up. We ain't nobody. But God wants to use nobodies like us just to show up. You know, you don't have to be perfect. If you're going to try to be perfect, you won't be waiting forever. You need to just show up. Go with me to Acts chapter 1, verse 15. You know, there's something cool about this showing up. How many men? Saul, the apostle Paul. This is the first time, man. Oh, man, right here. And in those days, Peter, this is Peter, stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together with about 120. Let's go on. Man and brethren, the scriptures must, need, must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was a guide to them that took Jesus. Go back to 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. This is the first time Peter received, was filled with the Holy Ghost and began to preach because he showed up to the upper room. How many were there? How many were there, not in the upper room, but around before that? 12, but even before, how many people did Jesus witness to? And the disciples? Thousands. 
And then check this out. After all these, you know, people and all that, when he calls people out for a purpose, you know what? There could be thousands of people that show up to a Sunday church service and we could put it on TV and make it look all nice. We'll call it the Sunday's best. Huh? We'll call it the Sunday's best and we'll market it. But out of those, you know what? All those people, I guarantee you, just like when you call them into the upper room, there's only going to be a few select that are going to come. Out of the thousand, only a hundred come. Out of a hundred, only ten come. So out of fifty, sixty, how many think come? Fifteen strong, baby. Sup? Man, that's our new building that we're moving to. Used to be the old drive through liquor store on the corner over there. So get ready. We're getting ready to move into that spot here soon. If you want to go check it out, go look at it. We're doing renovations and stuff. Pray over the building, amen. Pray for those tattoo people in the tattoo shop, amen. Pray for, you know what, the smoke shop. Pray for all them. God put us in the heart of that. You know, we didn't come, you know what, to be those fake kind of Christians. You know what, we came to show up and be here. God called us to be in the city, you know what, to be with the drug addicts, you know what, and the alcoholics and the sinners and those that are out there so that way we can lead them to Christ. Yeah. Want to be over there on the outskirts hiding where all the rich people go? We have this nice fancy building. Yeah, check out our new lights and fog machines. <laughs> How many souls you saved? I don't remember <laughs> the last time we even had an altar call. He preached the gospel for the first time in the upper room right here. Imagine after this how much he went and how many people that he led to Christ after this because he just showed up. He just showed up. He just showed up. You know, it was a place that people showed up. If you wanted to see God move and you wanted something to happen, you just showed up. Yvonne keeps showing up, bro. God got you. Don't worry. Don't fear. Don't be in distress. Don't give up. Don't start saying negative things. You know what? Say positive. Man, you're a wonderful man. You're a good person. We love you, brother. I don't care what anybody says about you. I got your back. And you keep on fighting. You keep on doing what you need to do. God's going to open up them floodgates of heaven for you, brother. You know what? People who show up are people who see opportunity. And they never want to miss what can happen. How many know that there's an opportunity to see New Hope Ministries spread like a wildfire in Brighton, Colorado? We just have to keep showing up. When pastor gets you mad, brush it off and just show up. Say so he's just immature. You know what? The Lord's growing him. He ain't on my level yet, but it's okay. <laughs> God called him to pastor the church, not me. Huh? And just show up. And just show up. Amen. <laughs> you know what? People that show up are always driven by requirements and not options. It's not an option for us, church. They don't say it's an option for me to be a father. I don't have an option to be a husband. I'm required by God. You know what? This isn't something that the world has made. No, by God. A man shall leave his mother and father and unite with the one, become one. I know some of us don't have husbands. Some of us are single. Maybe some of us, some of us just didn't choose. Some of us, we, we like the Apostle Paul. We just evangelists. So we, God is all we need. Why? Because we just got too much loving. <laughs> he, the Lord don't want you to be giving all that loving away. He said, that's all mine. You know, I ain't sharing you with nobody. All that loving is mine, so don't feel bad. Don't feel, you know what, jealous or resentful. Turns out, say, you don't even know how good I got it. It's me and Jesus all day, every day. Mm. Man. You know what? And if I was to say I have an option, I have an option to be a Christian just on Sundays. 
I don't want to be a Christian on Monday through Saturday. Why? Because I like cussing and drinking and snorting and doing all these things. So I have the option to be on a Sunday. That's Baptist ministry. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. <laughs> I shouldn't have said, see what I was telling you, man? I was supposed to be choosing my word. Man, y'all guys are supposed to call me on that one. Pastor, you're not supposed to be talking like that no more. Forgive me, Lord. Man. You know, so many live by option. It's if I feel like it. You know, some of us woke up this morning, if I feel like going to church. You know what? None of us say if I feel like getting on TikTok, right, Hita? <laughs> you ready to get on TikTok. You know what? Even Savannah, I mean, all my daughters, all of them. Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, everything. They're quick. It's not even an option. They just do it. But there are a few that just know that I am required. Those are the ones that just show up. I am required. You know, a pastor doesn't tell me, you know what, I have to be there like he used to tell the old, the old leadership in this, in this church. You got to be here. No, he don't say that no more. But you know what? You got to make a requirement for yourself. Amen. You got to say for yourself. You got to make a decision for yourself. You know what? No, I'm required to do this. I'm required to do that. I'm required to do this. So that way you don't make an excuse for yourself anymore. When you make an excuse, you end up back in prison. When you make an excuse, you end up back in jail. When you make an excuse, you end up back addicted to drugs. When you make an excuse, you end up back right there in the same old situation that you were in. Why? Because you have an excuse. How about Nehemiah? You know, Nehemiah, he was unqualified to rebuild the walls. Unqualified. He was a cupbearer. He had no business touching mortar or brick or any kind of construction man's tools whatsoever. You stay in there and you wash dishes, Nehemiah. But no. You know what? Nehemiah showed up when nobody else would show up. No other construction worker, no other, you know what, Nehemiah showed up. And when he got there, he seen, you know what, that it was in shambles. And God spoke to his heart because he showed up and made himself available with no skill in that trade. And guess what? Rebuilt the walls. Maybe you feel like you're insufficient. Maybe you feel like you don't have a calling, that you're not needed. But I'm telling you here this morning that you are needed, that you are sufficient, that you do have a calling. All you got to do is show up and make yourself available. Give him praise this morning. It's not an option, it's a requirement. You're required. You're required to go the extra mile. You're required to give him your whole heart. You're required to be faithful. You're required to be set apart. You're required to be consecrated. You're required. Don't make it an opinion. Don't make it if you want to. How about the required classes and the elective classes in school? How many of you guys or know people that got degrees or whatever and just got them with electives, like P.E. <laughs> oh, you're living, you graduated just on electives? Or did you have some requirements, required classes? See, we would never go anywhere if we just wanted to do electives all the time. We just want to do all the things that we wanted to do, the things that were fun. You know what? I like shop, so I'm going to take shop. Why? Because I don't like math. You know what? I'm going to go over here to the comic books class or whatever and read comic books. Why? Because I don't like geography and history. All electives instead of the required. Yee. Now let me tell you this. In order to make it to heaven, you have some required courses you got to pass. That's right. You can't just choose the electives all the time. Come on. Eee, man. In order to make it to heaven, you have some required classes that you have to just show up and, and do. Because they're required of you. I want you to go with me to the book of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. The pool of Bethesda. 
And we read of about a man here, amen, for many years, 30-something years, 38 or 36 years that would go to this pool. And it says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And now there is a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of imp impotent folks of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Let's just stay right there. Waiting. Let's go one more verse. Waiting. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whoever, whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole. And whosoever deceased he had, a certain man was there which had an infirmity for 38 years. You know what? I've been waiting on a check from unemployment for since February. Since February. <coughs> huh? But I still show up. Amen. I still get online. I still do my little thing, my checkoff list. Why? Because they owe me that money. They want me to stop so that way I don't get my blessing. Huh? 38 years, this man, a cripple, a lay, you know what? How, how many of us have excuses? Huh? This man got himself up, cleansed himself. Not his family, he got himself up, cleansed himself. And them chairs weren't probably too nice. He probably had to drag himself, I don't know. Get in his chair, get down there and get ready every day waiting for the stirring of the water just for a chance to hopefully get in there so that way he can be healed. He just showed up. He just showed up. He just showed up for 38 years. And it says, and when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. And Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. How many know that art? View has to change. See, he was going to the pools. Knowing that miracles took place at the pools, but didn't know who the miracle worker was. Do you hear me this morning, church? He knew that an angel of the Lord came and stirred the waters. I mean, that angel of the Lord that they're talking about here is Jesus. Because he's a healer. He's the only one that can heal. How many of you know that he's the living waters? He's the only one that can make waters bubble and stir. It's Jesus. Amen. Jesus tries to give people a physical view of him. A physical appearance for them to come to in their need. In this instant, it was water for this crippled man. You know, for some of us, I don't know what it may be. It may be a severe accident that you get into and you almost lose your life, but God spares it. Don't waste your blessings. Amen. Jesus healed you. Yes. Maybe it was an addiction, an overdose, a prison sentence. I don't know. But you showed up and Jesus answered for you. He had to do something physical to draw you to it. But all you had to do was stop looking at it and look at him to receive your healing. Stop looking at people and places and things and just show up. You know what? God always shows up. Even though you feel like giving up, please I beg of you, don't. Just keep showing up. One more verse. He says, and immediately the man, 
Not some time later, immediately the man was made whole. And he took up his bed and he walked. And on the same day, it was the Sabbath. The Sabbath day. No excuse. You know what? You're not supposed to heal. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do miracles. You're not supposed to beg. You're not supposed to be at the pool. It's a Sabbath day. You know what? I need to be at the church house. It's a Sabbath day. Why? Because I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss my healing. I don't want to miss my blessing. I don't want to miss that word. I don't want to miss it. You know what? And even, you know what? You got to be recognizing that sometimes, you know what? You may not like the word. You may not like the praise and worship. But no es importa. That doesn't matter. The whole reason for you being here is just to show up. Maybe somebody wanted to see your pretty little face. <laughs> Hallelujah. We love you here, man. You know what? I love to see you guys. Why? Because you know what? The enemy is out there, you know what? Working overtime. He's out there seeking and killing and destroying people spiritually, mentally, and physically, man. He's uprooting families all over the place. It's getting crazy. So the more that I see you and every time that I see you and more often that I see you, glory, hallelujah. Keep showing up. Have there been times when you just don't feel like it? I wake up like that a lot. Today I didn't, praise God. But probably for the last year, every Sunday. <laughs> Do I have to preach again today, God? Do I really got to wake up this early and spend time in your presence? Nobody cares anyways. These are just my thoughts running through me. You know what I mean? I'm just telling this is how the devil messes with me. I don't feel like it. I don't feel like loving my wife today. Why? Because we argued last night. I don't feel like loving my children today. Why? Because they stole my credit card. <laughs> I don't feel like loving my brother. Why? Because he didn't do it the way that I wanted him to do it. Huh? I don't feel like loving my pastor because I told him to be nice and he ain't being nice. And I ain't going to love him until he's nice. Huh? I just don't feel like it. There's times that we all don't feel like it, church. You know, if I was to tell you, like I shared with you guys, you know, like a, few, a couple days, you know, a couple days back, some of you guys were here, some of you guys weren't. You know what? My health ain't too good. It's hard for me to breathe. I've been coughing up blood. You know what I mean? I've been losing all kinds of weight. I'm fatigued. My sides, like everything hurts inside of me. Everything hurts inside of me. And all these cancer shows keep coming up. The Lord warned me about this a few, like, probably like four years ago. He started showing me these same things, and I went, and good thing I went because he had to remove some cancerous polyps from me. And I'm tired. You know, but I can say, you know what? I don't feel like it. You know, I don't feel like going to church today. Why? Because of my health. I don't feel so good. You know, I can say I don't feel like going to church today because I was out working all day in, in this crazy weather, and then I went home, and a tree fell in my backyard, and I had to cut it out of my pool with an electric chainsaw. Awesome. I'm telling you, it's quiet. <clears throat> Did the job. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? I don't feel like it. I don't feel like going to work. You know, I don't feel like going to my parole officer. I don't feel like taking care of my business today. I don't feel like it. You know, we can feel like a whole bunch of things, and you guys felt like a whole bunch of things this morning, but you just showed up. You know what? God always shows up in our weakness when we just don't feel like it. All we have to do is just show up. When you're weak, just show up. When you don't feel like it, just show up. And when you show up, God shows up. And then you can say, si se puede. Yeah. Yes, I can. Si se puede. Huh? Ah. How many of you guys are the little vatos that could? It's a new Brighton musical, <laughs> the vatos that could. Si se puede. 
new Christian musical. You're going to get that together for me, sister. I heard you're talented. <laughs> and man, I need that skit or I need that, that drama today. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You know what, we all have excuses of why we don't show up. You know what, I hate those long messages that I get, those long test messages. Pastor, I'm not going to make it to church tonight because of blah, blah, blah. And it's the same person that sends me the same message every single time on that same day. Stop sending me messages and just show up, please. <laughs> Don't send me a message on Sunday of, eh, 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 just show up. You know, the church house is the first house that we should be running to. Yes. You know what, Pastor, something just happened in my family. You know what, and before I go do all this, you know what, right now I need, we need to pray. Yes. We need to pray. You know, I don't feel like doing this and I don't feel like doing that, but I know we need to pray right now. Let's pray. Running to the church house, running to the church house instead of away from it. Come on, church. What are we waiting for? What are you waiting for? Man, you waiting for your homie to call you and say, you know what, I got the re-up. You know what, I got the ticket right now. You know what, to the, to the problems of your life right now. What, some fast money. But I forgot to tell you, fill you in with all the other stuff that comes behind it. <whistles> comes and goes comes and goes, church. Go with me to Ecclesiastes 11.4. I love this verse here. If I still get tattoos, I would tattoo this on my forehead because everybody's doing face tattoos now. But I don't get tattoos no more. You know what I mean? The Lord convicted me of that a long time ago. I got some. You know what I mean? Those are old ones. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. See, we're a 9-4. The dead lion. <laughs> it says, He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. What are you waiting for? You keep looking at the weather out there, you know what? You're never going to get nothing done. It's too hot. It's too hot. Get out there. Put on a hat, a sombrero, or something. Get you a mister. You got to get done. And you keep looking and saying this, it's never going to get done. If you keep saying, you know what, God, I'm going to do this next year, you're never going to do it. If you keep telling yourself, you know what, I'm going to tithe, I'm going to tithe, I'm going to tithe, you're never going to tithe. Man, it troubles me. I start laughing at people all the time now. Pastor, yeah, man, if I hit this $10,000 lottery ticket, I'm going to tithe to the church. I said, no, you're not. I said, you can't even tithe off 100. And I go, how are you going to tithe off $10,000? That's how my check, I don't even check, you know what I mean? Because I don't even want to know. <laughs> just be there, just show up, just start somewhere. Stop waiting. You know why we never have, that's why we never have. You know what, God's trying to break something, He's trying to show something, but if you don't show up and if you don't do it, it'll never happen. Go with me to uh, 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 4 through 6. You know what? When you don't know what to do, all you have to do is show up. Check this out. I love this, this scripture right here too. How many of you know these guys were in captivity? Check it out. It says, and if we say we enter into the city, then in the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we shall also die. Now, therefore, come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians, and if they save us alive, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall die. So we have to understand something here. You know what? They're, they're in captivity. There's a famine in the land. You know what? And they have to make a choice. They got to just show up somewhere. You know, it's either show up in the enemy's camp, show up in the enemy's camp, and have a chance for survival, or stay here where we're at and die. How many of you know that? We had to make moves in our lives. We had to make moves. God moved us in and he brought us to a different spot. Now check this out. Verse 5. He says, and they rose up in twilight. They got up from when they were at. They got up 
And he says to go unto the camp of the Syrians, and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. uncertainty nah man I can't go over there Lord why because man all my cousins do is drink and snort coke all day I'm a Christian now I serve God to show up I didn't tell you to stay there I didn't tell you to open your mouth I didn't tell you to open your airways I told you to show up and tell them about me I mean, there's a lot of times we don't go places because, oh, man, I, I, I burnt some bridges there. <laughs> How many of you guys burnt some bridges? Huh? <laughs> Family, friends, whoever, you guys burnt some bridges. And you guys remember the last time you heard, don't you ever show up here because, you know what, they got a ticket on you. Green light. So you don't go around instead of just showing up. You know, that was me here in Brighton. But I just showed up. I said, Lord, you want me to go where? You're out of your mind. <laughs> Do you want know the doors I kicked in? <laughs> you know my drug dealers I robbed? You know my families I ruined? You know the name and reputation I have? And Brian? Be a laughing livestock. Ain't nobody gonna come to this church. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but I just showed up. Man, that's comical. You know, that's how good God is. <laughs> he said, just show up, Leo. Don't worry about it. Your enemies are gonna be gone. I'm gonna remove your enemies from the camp. You ain't got no enemies in my camp. Even my enemies became my frenemies. <laughs> remember when you ripped me off, bro? I remember, dude. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> that was the old guy. <laughs> huh? Come on now. So you just got to make a move and go where God called us. You know, some of us came from Denver. Denver boys. Some people drive all the way from Denver out here still, man. And the Denver boy, man, what am I doing over here in farm town? There's mosquitoes and flies and all kinds of stuff over here. Smells. <laughs> man, you know what? God has you here. He made a move. You know what? You just need to show up now. Show up to the church house. You know what? You may not be in the perfect church. But there ain't no perfect church out there, man. If you go to a church, man, and everything looks all good, you better run. <laughs> man, they got all the nice, shiny TVs and everything, all the right words to say and everything. And this ain't the place for me. I need someone to be real with me, man. Where's that real pastor at, man? Huh? Where's that real pastor at that see me over there, you know, doing it? Why are you doing that for? Come on now, let's go. Aren't you going to judge me? I ain't going to judge you. Judge yourself. Let's go. Come on. You gotta get to some place. You got some place to go. You're holding up the train. Let's go. Man, if I gotta hold you by the hand, you know what, in your sin and say, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Lord, help him. Come on, Lord, jeez. Tired of seeing my brother in that state. It's like one of those guys at the Walmart when they put the leash on him, the little kids, so they can't go like six feet away from you. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Accountability, brothers. Amen. Hallelujah. We all have our spiritual leashes. Get back over here. Just show up and get over here. You know, when you show up, you need to show up with something. That's important. You know, when you show up, show up with something. And we have examples of this in the Bible. You know, how about the, the little boy that had the two loaves and the, and, and the fish? It wasn't enough for everybody, but he just showed up. You know what? He didn't say, if I had enough. He said, you know what? Look what I got, Jesus. I'm just showing up. Boom. And he made it more than enough. Amen. You know, just like a lot of us, you know what? Man, we just feel like we ain't enough. You're never going to be enough. All you got to do is show up, and God will make you more than enough. Yes. Give him praise this morning. Give him praise. You know what? How about 
The story of the rock and the sling. I didn't want to give you the name. How many of you guys know the name? David and Goliath. Now he just showed up with what he had. A rock and a sling. What's up? I ain't got much, but I got this, bro. What's up? Let's make it happen. Let's go kill a giant. <laughs> oh, you guys don't want to? Cool. Well, stay there. Bro. Me and the Lord are going then, I guess. Solo. What's up? You know, sometimes you're going to have to do that. Sometimes you're going to show up, you know what I mean, on assignment, and you're going to be there to share something with the word of the Lord, you know what I mean, with your friends and your family, and they ain't going to have no interest. You know, and you're going to be like, you know what, I'm going to go kill a giant. You guys want to come? And if they don't want to come, you know what, leave them there. Then you stay over there with the rest of them over there, and the rest of the Israelites up there crying with the king. I'm going to go with King Jesus and kill some giants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about the lady with two mites? She gave all that she had. You know, I know we got a lot of tithers in this church. I don't know, you know, I don't, tell, I don't look at any of that stuff. Praise God. Thank you, guys. Hallelujah. Giving. You know, we give what we have. You know, we're not, we're not rich. None of us are rich. You know, maybe some of us are, and I don't know. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know, we give what we have. Why? Because we love God. You know, we, we, we have. In the, here, we give. We show up. You know what? I truly do believe that 50% of success is just showing up. And the other 50 is using what you have. 50% is just showing up and the other 50 is just using what you have. What do you got? Hands and feet? Most of us got a mouth. <laughs> Tame the tongue. Tame the tongue. <laughs> I'm going to give you five, th or five things here, or four things. And it, it just has to deal with basic things, you know what I mean? In, in, in the workplace or even in the church or dealing with God, you know what? What's the, the most important thing about, you know what, getting hired? <coughs> Showing up! Everybody wants to do something for God, but you know what? A lot of us don't want to show up when it matters the most. We want to show up when it's convenient for us. You know, we got to realize that we can't just show up when it's convenient for us and when everybody, you know, we got to learn that we got to show up when times are hard, when times are trouble, you know, when there's no favor, when there's no pat on the back, when there's no recognition, just show up. Amen. You know, I ain't got a job for you right now. That doesn't mean that I ain't going to come to you tomorrow and go, hey, do you got a job for me? No, I told you I don't got a job right now. The next day, hey, do you got a job for me? The next day, no, I told you, I, just keep going, persistence. 38 years. Huh? 38 years. How many times we get ourselves in trouble and they tell you, you're on parole for five years? Huh? You got to show up to this office. Why? Because you just have to show up. And if you don't show up, what happens? Consequences. More classes. If you go to prison a lot, slap on the wrist. He won't be back anyways. <laughs> That's what they do. Why? Because they know they got you. Why you just got to show up and show up on time? Show up on time. How much do we show up but we don't show up on time? It happens, right? What would happen if you go to work and you were late every day? I don't know how my daughter does it. She's late all the dang time. And she still works in the hospital. She'd never get a better position in the hospital because she's late every day. <laughs> on time. You know, we all expect God to show up on time for us. How come we don't show up on time? And when you show up, guess what? You give your best. No, I need some guy show up. I always just chase guys off from work all the time, man. You smell like a brewery. Man, you're throwing up all day long. I tell you to do one task. You know, I said, pick up the grinder. Okay, do something else. Grab the extension cord. Oh, my gosh. Sit on the bucket. Oh, my. Just go home. Huh? Same thing in church, man. You know what gets me is the people on their phones. Híjole. I know we're living in a day like that, but everybody checking their text messages, their Instagrams, their shout out, whatever you guys are doing. Your DMs. What are you guys call them? Híjole. Is that you, brother? No, 
<laughs> like, give them their best. I mean, like, even if you don't want to, you got to give them your best. Yes. Man, I was one of those guys that would show up to work when I was in the world. I would have the five-gallon bucket around my neck because I was jacked up. I couldn't hold water down. <laughs> Still putting stuff down. <laughs> Why don't you just go home now? <laughs> I'm okay, bro. <laughs> I just showed up. I'm like, I need a paycheck. I got bills to pay. I got to go home. We're gonna... Come on. Most of us, we don't do that no more. How about when we show up? You got to show up ready. Yes. Ah, God, I'm coming to receive this morning, Lord God. You know what? I need this. I'm, at, I'm ready. I'm ready, Lord God. You got to praising and worshiping. Huh? Love it. Get up in the shower. <laughs> Wake up all the dogs and the cats and the neighbors right away. <laughs> then you got to show up ready to learn. You know, one thing that irritates me the most is those people that, I don't even care if this is what they're, that they're good at and they know that I am a professional window installer. I don't care if you're a professional window installer, or a professional framer, a coder. Sorry, Jerry, I was thinking. Of... <laughs> professional something else, okay? <laughs> but they know how to do. You know everything. You know what I mean? It's no. Nah. You know, just gotta show up to learn. You know what am I? I might know how to do every single thing. You know what custom in it, but there's always something to learn. What can I learn today? Amen. Not about what I know and all these things, but what can I learn today? You know, we all show up with what we know, but how come we don't show up with what we can learn about? Yes. Amen. We got to show up to learn. Amen. So you got to show up on time, show up giving your best, show up ready, and show up ready to learn. Amen. When you don't show up, you rob yourself and you rob others. Amen. When you don't show up, you rob yourself and you rob others. It's in the workplace too. Man, it used to irritate me. Have a five-man crew and only two dudes show up and you got, you know what, a ten-man job? Newsflash! Uh-huh. They just don't show up. You know what? You just don't hurt yourself. You hurt others. Why? Because the other person has to do double the work, has to fill in that space, that void, take on that weight. You know how many people in the church are carrying such a big burden that they're not supposed to be carrying because everybody else is supposed to take on the load with them so that way it's not so heavy? Help! Just show up. Amen. We're not expecting you to do anything, but just show up. That's enough. That speaks volumes here. See, church, showing up isn't about what is going on. In your lives. Or what I can get for myself. Showing up is about how I can bless others or what I can do for somebody else. That's what showing up is. You know, when we wake up, most of us are mature in here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I'm learning. We're learning to be mature, amen? But when we don't show up, guess what? We hurt others. You know what? Because maybe the only reason why maybe a brother or sister in Christ came to church today is because you were coming. That's the only reason why they showed up, because Sister Papoofni was going to show up today. <laughs> She's that lady with the big old hair and the hat, you know, Sister Papoofni from way down south. <laughs> How about Brother Clivus with the boots, and you know what, he got the 38 special. You know Brother Clivus? You don't know Brother Clivus? Okay. You know, somebody just wanted to see Brother Clivus today. I just wanted to see that man in his boots and that 38 special, man. He got a 38 special, that revolver. Nice. You know, when the Clivus got to talk to that man, that man might not be saved, but he wanted to come see him in the church house, and eventually this man got saved and became a Christian. Why? Because Clivus showed up and made himself available. How many of us need to make ourselves available? Amen. How many of you guys are ready? Go spend some time with God. I want you to stand with me here this morning.
Now, right where you're at, before we come up here, this is personal. This isn't something, you know what, that's supposed to be, you know what, for everybody on display, you know, look at me, little puppet. <laughs> that's real. You know what, Lord, I, 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 I need you. I've been doing things on my own, and I have a tendency to do things on my own, and it's, it's a bad habit that I have, but you know what, you need to be seated on the throne of my heart. I don't care if you've been brought up in the church, if you've attended church all your life. You know what, man? This, this is serious. If you know this morning that you know what, that you really just need God more than what, you, you need to give God more than what you've been giving Him, and you want to just surrender, you know what, your life to Him, your imperfect life to Him, I want you just to say this after me here this morning. Say, Father, please forgive me for my selfishness. Forgive me for this wicked heart. I'm asking you this morning just to give me a new heart, a heart of your very own. I know I'm not perfect. I have many faults, flaws and failures, but in my weakness, you are my strength. I don't want to make excuses no more. I'm just going to show up and I'm going to let you do the rest. I love you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now that's real. That ain't one of them textbook things that you open up. Okay, let's go. It's real. Now if you have a need and you want God to meet that need, you know what? God's right here. The Holy Spirit's here to meet that need in your life. And I'm going to leave it entirely up to you. The altar's open. You can come up here or where you're at, wherever you feel more comfortable, and present your request to God and allow Him to fulfill that because you don't need somebody to come. And I love laying hands on people. I do. I do. But I want this to be real for you. You speak to God from your heart and you tell Him what you need so He can answer and fulfill all those. You come to Him. You show up. Amen. God bless you. Don't leave here this morning without spending time with him. We love you.
and confusion You have to bow, you have to bow All the rest of things that demand my attention You have to bow, oh you have to bow Fear and depression, shame and confusion You have to bow, oh you have to bow And all the rest of things that demand my attention I'm gonna praise, I'm gonna praise